Today on the BRS TV 52 FAQ, why am I not getting 99% rejection? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of the BRS TV 52 FAQ, where each week we answer some of your most common reefing related questions. This week we're answering a pretty common question with, why doesn't my 99% rejection RODI membrane achieve the listed 99% rejection? In the last few years, Dow upped their game and increased the rejection on their 75 gallon per day membranes from 98% to 99, which means higher water quality and lower DI resin consumption for all of us because your home's 300 TDS water will be filtered by the membrane down to 3 TDS rather than 6. In today's video, we'll share why those results are not always achievable and some things you can do to get closer. Dow is the world's leader in membranes and what's in a vast majority of the RODI systems sold to the reefing community because they simply produce the best results. Even those that are not using Dow labeled membranes are almost all using either Dow material and rolling it themselves to save a few bucks or just relabeling them with their own brand. Sometimes changing the specs from 75 gallons a day to 90, but at the same time increasing the required pressure from 50 to 60 PSI, which is somewhat misleading since a majority of reefers don't have 60 PSI in their home. So a vast majority of reefers out there are very likely using Dow 75 gallon per day membranes whether they know it or not, but not all of them are achieving 99% rejection. In fact, a lot of them are very likely only achieving 98. So why is that? So much of this is just understanding water has thousands of different variables, everyone's tap water is different, and having reasonable expectations related to that. It might seem kind of misleading or that the membranes or systems are underperforming if they're not hitting that listed 99% rejection. However, we have to remember that Dow simply can't account for every single water supply out there. And well or groundwater has very different contaminants than river water. And the water hardness in Alabama is so very different than Utah. And in fact, California ranges the entire gambit from hardest to softest, depending on where you are, meaning the water quality and types of contaminants you're going to experience very wildly. Fact is, the membrane won't perform the same on 100 TDS water as 500 TDS water, and 100 TDS water doesn't necessarily perform better if the contaminants it contains have a smaller molecular weight or generally harder to remove. So Dow stated 99% rejection is based on a standardized set of water parameters with 250 TDS water, which is passed through a water softener, 77 degrees, 15% recovery, and 50 PSI. Reality is many of you don't need or use a water softener. Most people don't have 77 degree tap water and certainly not in the winter. The 15% recovery or almost six to one waste to product water ratio means to create 65 gallons of water, you need to waste 425 gallons, which is great for membrane performance and longevity, but also more waste than most people want. And I'd say most reefers have systems closer to three to one or two to one, sometimes even as low as one to one with dual membranes. And lastly, while most people do, not everyone has 50 PSI in their home, so you might need to consider a booster pump to achieve that. So end of the day, considering all of these factors, I wouldn't be overly surprised if you find that your system or membrane is producing 98% rejection rates. A vast majority of the Dow membranes out there that we encounter operate in that 98 to 99% range. Dow does state the minimum rejection is 96% rejection, but I'd call that ultra rare and almost always easily connected to some obvious issues like 1000 TDS water, ultra low operating pressures of 30 or so, or ice cold 35 degree mountain water coming out of your tap. If you're achieving lower than 99% and want to increase that, there are a few tips. First is, if your system is brand new, make sure you've let the system run for 48 hours straight to let the membrane performance stabilize before you take a reading. Even if the system or membrane isn't new, you still need to let the system run for 20 minutes or so before taking a measurement to get a reasonable reading. In fact, to get a reading related to optimal performance, taking a measurement after an hour or so is best. For the most accurate readings, it's also important that the TDS meter's probes are positioned correctly. With probes like this, it's the best performance will always be when they're positioned so the water is flowing through the center of the two sensor pins rather than going over them in series, something that HM Digital shows in their instructions. Once you're satisfied you're getting accurate readings, the two easiest ways to increase performance is to adjust the waste to product water ratio or increase pressure. You can increase the waste to product water ratio by simply changing out your flow restrictor for a larger flow model. I will say that very few people find increasing the amount of wastewater these systems produce very attractive, but it might be necessary if you have extremely hard or dirty tap water. 
Most reefers will opt to increase their pressure instead, particularly if they're in the 30 to 40 PSI range and looking to get up to that 50 PSI operating spec. This is where you're almost certainly going to see a rather large improvement in both flow rates as well as water quality, rejection rates, and related to that, a rather large reduction in DI resin consumption. If you're burning through resin, this might be the best option, and even though the booster pump isn't cheap, it's likely lower cost than burning resin. As always, if you'd like to explore this topic a bit further, join the larger conversation over at Reef to Reef with our link down below. If you enjoy our videos, do us a favor and give us a quick thumbs up and subscribe. See you next week with another 52 FAQ.